Hello and uh, welcome to my first online photography tutorial. Today I want to talk about RAW development and why it's actually interesting to use RAW format. Well, first of all, a few words up front. Um, why don't we have RAW actually in Photoshop or other software? Well, the camera manufacturers unfortunately are all using their own RAW format, even within a uh, manufacturer you might find with different cameras, different raw uh, file formats. So the software makers have just given up of uh, giving uh, to any camera its direct uh, interface. So we do need, unfortunately, an intermediate step between shooting the picture and going to Photoshop. So you have to go into your raw development, which is usually coming with your camera, so Canon, Nikon, Sony, whatever, they all have their development software. So why do we go back? Well, uh, JPEG it just simply means within your camera at the time of the shot in the DSLR, the camera has, according to your settings, made a JPEG. I'm thinking, hmm, that's pretty much what you wanted. Now, if you look at those pictures here in this example, that's not the case. So JPEG is here. He thought, that's a cool picture, and I think that's what you wanted. That's not true, because he had the wrong brightness, he had the wrong color, um, he had maybe some wrong um, contrast, he had some wrong hue, color wavelengths, dominance or not, uh, wrong shading, uh, whatever. So a lot of things that were not correct. So you wish you could go back to the camera at the time you shot and say, like, hold a moment, I want a more white balance or less. Now RAW gives you exactly that. RAW is straightforward. Your camera, exactly at the second the shot was taken, and no post-processing, the RAW pixels. Good. So let's go right away and uh, use a live example to show you what you can do uh, when you want to do so. so an example here now uh, here's a jpeg picture i'm not going to open it up i'm going to go right away to raw and by the way it's the same picture i'm going to see so this is not different from the jpeg picture i'm just take away the 16.9 um here's a picture i'm quickly can look at my eye button by the way this is a sony software from my sony camera uh, i can see the iso you can see the f number i can see Shutter speed, shutter speed, so I can tell my Facebook friends what I was using as I took the shot. I'm not satisfied because when I shot this, it was not as foggy as my camera thought it was. So my camera has done something with it, but it's not correct. The good news, I can change this. Uh, in order to view my process, I'm going to go to W. So here you will see my original uh, camera shot, and here you will see my progress. Put this a little bit into the middle. And here I have all of those uh, controls I can I can go through. I'm not going to go through all of them. Let's go through the most important ones you will probably find in your camera software as well. Um, that brightness. Now, this picture does look quite bright, you know, kind of foggy bright. So let me take brightness down and then show you the immediate effect. Ah, so it already takes down some of that uh, incorrect picture. Let me go straight away to a white balance, and I think this is the most one of the most important you can use at this point. White balance is uh, the process of removing unrealistic color casts. You know that the object which appear white in person are really rendered white in your photo. The camera is by far not as good as our natural eye. Our natural eye can really judge. I know different light sources, night, day, in room, outside, still the same colors. The camera cannot. The camera looks for some reference and tries then to decide, ah, I think that's the color you meant, or that's the white you meant. White balance gives you the possibility of going back and saying, I think you were wrong in this color. And let me show you this example and go right away to the professional version, I think, using a pipette. So I'm going to go and say, like, I think the clouds uh, are much more white rendered than whatever you thought, I don't know. Let's point on it and see, ah, so now he's changing the color to the more natural version. Because I gave the camera, now the, the image, a much better white reference point. You know, I could use it also like a little cloud, you know, uh, as a reference. You know, I, I had some standard settings, but I think, you know, changing white reference in this version uh, is already very important to get to the right uh, balance uh, under the correct light condition. So I'm helping the camera a little bit to getting to where it should be and coming to the picture I saw naturally when I took the pic. Uh, creative style in here just basically gives me back my camera settings in terms of standard predefined. Well, I'm not going to use these because uh, I'm much better uh, as you are, so we're going to continue on our manual uh, forward. 
contrast, very important. Uh, this picture would need some contrast, I think, so I'm going to up contrast. And you see immediately when you sharpen the picture on contrast, uh, you might need to opt a little bit on the brightness as well because contrast just takes the brightness slightly down. D range optimizer, don't need it here. You can uh, do some adjustments, you know, either increase the highlight or the shadow areas, uh, play with it. Uh, it's only interesting if we have very specific uh, uh, situations, which we don't have here in this context. Um, I'm going to jump right away to color. Color um, gives me here in this software two of the major uh, parameters I can work on. Hue. Hue means, you know, which of the wavelengths of our uh, waves uh, are the dominant ones. Now, I can either go to the side and then it comes more greenish. Oh, that looks bad. Or I go to the other side and it comes more reddish. I don't think the camera did a bad job in terms of hue. So I leave the hue as the camera did, but I think it was just weak on saturation, you know, going back to here. So I think the colors came in much more better. So um, saturation is very much more important in this picture, you know, because I can now really opt in the purity of the way I saw it. And now I see what I saw in terms of those plants over here, the greens and everything. So this is already much better. Now, since I use saturation, um, and I need to also work a little bit on the brightness. Okay, here we go. So that is now much more the picture I wanted to have. Uh, I have some more capabilities, such as uh, some as we spoke about, or noise reduction. If I have dark, dark pictures, I have a high ISO, I could immediately do some noise reduction and could also take it off. Uh, can do some minor adjustment. Don't need to in this case because um, the picture has ISO 200, so it doesn't have really noise at all. Uh, I can do some tone curve. People know this using software that you can play uh, overall uh, against you know the histogram of the picture. If you want to do some stuff here, it's just uh, not everybody using it. Uh, whatever you want to go after in terms of the um, picture, I think I, all I want to do in this case is getting out the um, uh, natural tone I saw at the time when I took the picture and getting it to where it was. So you see the difference of what the camera thought uh, at the time I took the picture and what I think I saw was my eyes and now I got it back and now I'm going to go and save this picture uh, as a JPEG and then I'm going to continue. Save it right here. And now I can continue to go into Photoshop, GIMP, Lightroom, whatever, because up here, you know, a little bad thing, maybe from whatever I took there. Maybe I want to shrink down, cut it, maybe, you know, work on the waterline, tilt it a little bit so it's more even, whatever. But I have a much better JPEG than I had before because it's much more towards what I want to do and it's very direct control. I hope you found this useful and informative. I hope you enjoy raw development as much as I do. And I can only say uh, I wish you all happy raw development.